Hello and welcome to our quick fire video on modernization within financial institutions. I'm Lorraine Carter, a senior research analyst in the fintech and payments team at Juniper Research, and I'm here with Brandon from CSG. Brandon, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Good morning. Uh, Brandon Sailors, I'm a vice president at CSG in our CX division, where I manage our strategic accounts. Amazing. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. <clears throat> My pleasure. Um, right now, financial institutions are in the middle of a major technological shift. Legacy systems still underpin much of the financial services ecosystem, yet customers increasingly expect real-time tailored experiences. As a preview to our webinar, I'd like to explore how financial institutions are modernizing their technology to meet rising customer demands. Sure. Uh, yeah. Happy to do that. Uh, you know, we meet with a, a number of different financial services businesses uh, within our within my team specifically, and these can range everything from uh, banking to mortgage servicing to insurance. So we we really span the depth. We really look at financial services holistically, and one of the common threads that most of them have around uh, that the need to upgrade is the fact that they still are dealing with a lot of legacy siloed data. data. Um, there have been a number of initiatives uh, over the last 10 years to, to try and build larger data lakes and, and utilize that to solve problems of having multiple appearances of customers in multiple databases that don't really talk to each other. Uh, and we, so we see this challenge uh, play out again and again and again. And what you end up seeing, or, or certainly what we've seen, is the customers struggle then with having a consistent branded experience. Um, you know, marketing's pulling from one database, the servicing team might be pulling from yet another. And then in the case of some of the larger banks, the various lines of business have their own databases with their customers. So, you know, if you're a mortgage customer, but you also have credit cards, as well as maybe a checking or savings account, you could show up in, in multiple databases, be targeted differently, and you get that very inconsistent experience from, from, uh, from what we've seen. And that really leads to um, carpet bombing of your customers if you don't do it right. Uh, it shows that you don't really understand your customer. You're not looking at them holistically. And this is one of the things that we've certainly seen this challenge again and again. Um, so being able to have that single source of truth, but more importantly, to again, if you don't build it into a singular database, our approach has always been the data lives where the data lives. We can still, uh, if we don't have a door, we, we can go through a window. You know, we have the ability to, to tie these different databases together contextualize why people are calling and, and try and be a little bit more proactive and then help to uh, help the lines of businesses uh, to prioritize certain types of messages. Uh, the worst time to reach somebody is if they're having trouble with their, with their mortgage, as an example, not a great time to be marketing them other services. Uh, so just having that great understanding of what your customers are doing, where they are in their life cycle, and how to best reach them in the right channel at the right time. These are the types of challenges that we see, you know, our financial services customers facing on a daily basis that we like to help them solve. Yeah, thank you for the big picture view of the challenges faced by financial institutions and their customers alike. Um, that really brings the challenge to life. And it leads nicely into another challenge that I'm seeing within the industry, which is consistency. So even as banks invest in digital transformation, many are struggling to unify the experience across both digital and physical touch points. Um, so how can banks ensure that customers receive a consistent, high quality experience across all digital and physical channels? Oh boy, that's a, a, that's a, a great continuation to, that, uh, to the similar challenge I mentioned a moment ago, but it does take a different angle. Um, and primarily because you have different generations of folks that are, you know, engaging in different ways and they have those different preferences from the folks that still like to go and, and have an in-person experience and maybe a local branch, you know, those to those folks that are like, I will never step foot in a branch. I have no desire to, I'm going to use their mobile app. I'm going to use the web. Um, I'm going to use ATMs uh, as much as possible. Though, again, even the ATMs are, are starting to diminish in, to diminish in uh, uh, importance. Um, from the standpoint of so many people are cashless now. So it, it is pretty interesting to see that uh, consistency across channels. And, you know, I think what we try and, and help our customers understand is, again, look at engagement, not just as single points in time, but try and understand the overall journey. 
again, what are clients trying to do? Uh, can you get the big picture of, you know, total lifetime value, total uh, view of all of the different services that your customers have or potentially could have? Uh, but again, it's, it's truly understanding, you know, what are they trying to accomplish? And if you have the ability, especially if they're a long-term customer, what do they normally do? Um, you know, what are those top 10 reasons that they call into the contact center or what are the top 10 things that each of these customers do on a monthly basis as they interact? And if you see patterns, guess what? Learn the patterns and be proactively serve the, serve the information to them proactively instead of putting up friction to help them go self-serve or do the things or find the data that they're looking to do. Um, I'll, I'll give you one quick use case for that that we've seen, which is we know a lot of folks will, uh, they like to call just to verify that their, their checks have automatically posted to their account. So you see this behavior once a month or, or twice a month uh, on Fridays as, as checks are being posted and people are gonna call through an IVR or they're gonna visit an app or visit the website just to verify that things are posted. You know, one of the great areas, instead of making them call, uh, call or go into a branch for something like that, send them a text message proactively. Hey, Mr. Smith, you know, your, your uh, transaction has posted and uh, your money is now available. Just things along those lines. When you see that these are, are elements or steps in a journey that customers take on a monthly basis, how can you put that together to be proactive and, and serve them in such a way to where they this great branded experience? So it's not... <laughs> we were talking about the consistency piece, be consistent, be proactive, have, a same, have the same voice. And those are the types of things that will really help to build that great branded experience. Yeah, thank you for that. It seems like customer needs are more multidimensional than ever and banks aren't just targeting one specific group. They have to find a way to target many different consumers, but also to identify which consumer has which preferences. Um, do you see a place for AI in this or machine learning models? Boy, the AI, the AI piece is always a fun one. And, you know, I, I will say it, at CSG, much like other folks, uh, you know, AI is the topic of conversation daily, certainly within our, our leadership team, within our, our product organization. And I would say that uh, at CSG, we're taking a more pragmatic approach. So we've been leveraging these technologies for years in, for various things, various automations. And I think most of our customers have as well. What's changed is the fact that now we have generative AI that's really come into play and come into being and, and has the promise of so many different types of things. Um, but at the end of the day, you still have to understand what are those elements that are most important? What really drives a true return on investment? Um, I'll give you an example. I just saw an interview yesterday with uh, Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. He was being interviewed by Bloomberg and they were asking him about his view of, of AI and the use of AI in, in an institution the size of, of Chase. And he had some pretty interesting things. He was saying, hey, we've been doing AI since 2012. You know, they leverage large language models internally, but where JP Morgan fits, as well as a number of the financial institutions that we talk to on a regular basis, it's a more internal focus. It's still not uh, ready for prime time from a customer facing perspective because they're a highly regulated industry. So understanding that and understanding how they use it, he was saying in the interview that they've invested $2 billion a year and that they actually get that return in hard cost savings, headcount reductions, et cetera. But he also said something that I really thought resonated because we hear this from so many of our clients, which is it's also the soft elements that we can't necessarily put numbers to where it helps to improve experience, experience of their agents, and it helps their agents do a better job serving their customers. And I thought that was really important uh, because he highlighted a couple areas that his managers, which he said they have 150,000 managers leveraging some form of AI, which I thought was a really big number. Uh, you know, but he, was, he pointed to things such as, hey, we can leverage AI to scan contracts. We use them to pull reports and summarize reports for us, and they can do that better and faster than other folks can. And then that customer service side and what he was focused on was helping to, again, improve how they serve, not necessarily looking to replace jobs, but looking to make, jo make people better at their jobs. And I thought that was just a, a fantastic interview with a great leader in the industry. 
And then I compared that to what we're doing. And as I said, we've taken a pretty pragmatic approach too, which is how do we leverage AI to make some of our systems better? How do we make the UI work better for our end customers? Uh, so that again, that summarization of reports, summarization of journeys, being able to do things and look across large data elements and say, how do you summarize this uh, in a conversational fashion? Um, those are the types of things we're looking to deploy. We're definitely pushing the boundaries with Gen AI, just like other folks are. But when we talk to our, our um, folks in heavily regulated industries like financial services, we're very quick to coach to say, hey, we have to put up strong guardrails. You can't let Gen AI just say whatever it wants. You have to have those guardrails in place. You have to be able to leverage the technology in a way to where you know what it's going to say. It has limited uh, things that it can respond to, uh, which will make, make sure that you stay within regulations and compliance and, and all of those types of things. And, and don't confuse customers because again, just the way you say certain things, uh, those large language models and gen AI, uh, you can be very surprised sometimes with what it comes up with. And uh, in banking, you don't want surprises. So that's one of those areas where you know, our data science team works really hard to say, how do we leverage, the, uh, leverage these technologies in a very practical way? Not necessarily breaking or pushing boundaries, but in such a way to say, how do we enhance the customer experience? How do we help drive that self-service? And how do we help bring clarity to the engagements? And that's where we've been successful in some of our deployments of AI. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it seems like AI has been behind the scenes for years, as you said, and now it's really coming to the forefront um, and helping with that unification of experience between the digital and the physical. Um, but looping back around to legacy systems, I mean, how are you seeing banks are implementing this AI into legacy systems? Are there any technological challenges or are there any um, standout examples of banks that have implemented this in a very successful manner? Uh, so yes, uh, yes and no. I, I would say that, um, you know, a couple of the key use cases that we've seen, again, they are looking to say, how do we enhance agent experience? Uh, they're looking to uh, also, from what I've seen uh, in the field, they're looking to enhance that experience. They're looking to say, where can I automate? Where does it make sense to automate? Where can I send messages leveraging uh, generative AI in such a way to where, uh, again, it, 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 it lends clarity, but it doesn't necessarily take away from what you're trying to accomplish or it enhances the agent experience. So those are some of the bigger ones. Uh, again, whether it's an inbound experience and taking that those very clunky uh, inbound voice response units that people have used for decades and, and press one for sales and two for service and this, you know, how do you make that into a, into a, a, a better user experience? That's a big, that, that's a big use case uh, that we certainly have seen out there. And, uh, you know, we've been leveraging our technology. Again, we've been in the voice space for 40 plus years. So this has been um, a large portion of us serving a number of our banking customers you know, leveraging these voice response units, but doing so in a more intelligent and now conversational way. And uh, the AI piece is really helping to do that because it does allow you to have this, what we call an intelligent front door approach to where you can be a little bit more open in what you're saying and help have stronger intent determination so that you can actually reach more IVRs with just a single front door versus having to have maybe 10 plus um, IVRs, different numbers that people call for different services. Now you can start to consolidate that into a single number, have a single branded consistent experience. Here's that nice little thread you were pulling for us. And, and that's really what the whole intent is, which is how do you make it easier to have a single experience, but still be able to understand who your customers are, why they might be calling, and then direct them either to the right self-service and or direct them to the right group of agents the first time that leads to a very, very positive experience. Um, one of the other deployments that we've seen, again, is more on the, on the backside. Again, recognizing who customers are in this economy, we certainly have seen a lot of strain and it's putting a lot of pressure in financial services around payment, on-time payments and such, uh, as folks struggle to maybe meet some of their bill, bill commitments. And uh, AI is one of those elements that really can be used. And we've certainly see, seen these algorithms help to understand and predict when customers are going to move into that kind of space. And it allows you to um, do things in a way to where you can uh, predict that behavior, get in front of that behavior, 
offer payment plans. You know, it's, it's not about threatening your customers. It's about working with your customers. And the banks that we've seen that do it best try and take that understanding, empathetic approach to saying, hey, let's get ahead of this. Let's start working with our customers to say, how do we, how do we help them through trouble times versus just um, sending them into collection motions? And we've certainly seen AI building some of these models, being able to predict, determine what's the right path. And then, you know, again, what's the right cadence? Uh, a lot of times folks don't want to talk to people in those instances because they're embarrassed. So how do you provide a frictionless self-service experience? Uh, and again, leveraging different technologies, different digital channels most times to make it easy for customers to, to get what they need, uh, still stay in, in uh, as a good account and her hopefully work through any troubled times that they're having. And, and those are some instances that we've certainly seen on the front end coming into the bank and then certainly some predictive models on what's happening with customer behavior based off of their um, based off of their payments and, and creating the right types of programs. Yeah, thank you. Um, it seems like you have a really big picture view of how technology has modernized financial institutions over the years. And also you're able to really zoom in on the consumer experience of you know people who are embarrassed to call up people and then how AI can be a use case for that. Um, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you again for taking the time today. Well, thank you so much. It's been so much fun for me as well. Yeah, I'm glad. It's exciting to see how emerging technologies, especially agent tech AI, are opening up new possibilities for financial institutions. If you're interested in hearing more about this discussion, we'll be hosting a webinar on November the 18th. You can register at the link in the video discussion.